Together in this common goal of service to ourselves and to our community, we seek to define our lives for the futures we desire. We have faith that our highest and best good is available to us. Our good radiates outwards to everyone we meet, interact, and connect with. We look forward to the ways that you will surprise and amaze us today, Spirit. Guide us to carry your love and wisdom with us. Fan its flame and inspire our best contributions. Remind us to remain present, grateful, and charitable as our plans and intentions unfold and we accomplish our goals and your goals in exciting, maybe even at times, unpredictable ways. This is the day, the week, the life we've made for ourselves. So let us be glad and rejoice in it. Show us how to author our lives so that we can all be vessels of love and truth and abundance. Let us see each other and ourselves through the lens of purposeful perspective so that we can all go out and embrace life with joy, abundance, health, and happiness. And so it is. 
comic habit. <laughs> we live like we're dying. Why don't we fear the fear and do it anyway? Why don't we be the change that we would like to see? Let's just live. All right. Love y'all. <laughs>
I invite you to stand and greet each other with a hug, a fist bump, or just a simple smile, whatever you're comfortable with. But this week, because we're going to be having an opportunity to share during the service, um, I ask that we limit our greetings to the people immediately in front of you and in the immediate back and next to you so that we don't have this, 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 this tangled web that then we have to wait because we are going to have a period in the service where we're going to have some interaction. So um, with that in mind, stand and greet your neighbor. I'll greet you again, neighbor. I'm feeling great. There's, there's these people called the Mennonites. September 6th, right? Let's go to the next slide that's Reverend Justin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shared community, right? Wow. Even when we're in a small space, even the people around us, you know, it's like energy and power in there. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so, like I said, today we do have a little special uh, guest. Um, Reverend Justin Epstein from Unity Center New York has graciously uh, volunteered, um, or, well, I ask him <laughs> as a personal favor if he would allow us to stream one of his services um, that he's given recently, and he kind of edited it down a little bit for us, and um, he's just an amazing guy. Laura and I just got back from a retreat with Unity Center in New York up in Connecticut um, two weeks ago, and just as a little, uh, as a little, um, oh, okay, we're going to skip the slide. That's cool. Um, <laughs> um, just as a little background, Reverend Justin Epstein graduated from the Unity School of Religious Studies in 1993 and was one of the youngest ordained ministers in the history of Unity. And then in 1995, he went for his advanced ministry ministerial training, he calls it, living for three and a half years at the Anananda Village in California where he, where he became a licensed yoga instructor. And then he came back to the East Coast and he served as the associate minister to the iconic Eric Butterworth that, um, many of us know from 1999 to 2004. In his messages, Justin integrates insights from both East and West, including Christianity, Judaism, yoga philosophy, psychology, science, and personal development. He's been the spiritual leader and senior, senior minister at Unity Center New York since 2011. He's shared the stage with such notables as Dr. Maya Angelou, and Naila Vincent, Larry Dosi, and Marianne Wilmanson. He also has authored the, a top-selling book um, called Super You. It's a really good book. I highly recommend it. Seven Steps to Profound Peace and Personal Power. So the message that Justin desires to share with everyone in all of his messages is that his belief in God is when, within every person that I was talking about a little a minute ago, and that the highest purpose of life is to realize that presence within. So with that, let's start the video, as this is our first streamed-in video talk. So bear with us. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. That's what we're talking about in this series. Atomic habits. Atomic little things 
tiny habits that over time can make a big difference. Last week we said that, you know, if you're taking off from LA in a plane and it's about 3.5 degrees off, you're headed to New York City, you're going to end up in Washington, D.C., right? Hundreds of miles off base. Our little habits done today will be, will be 36 times more effective by the end of the year. Every day. You do a little habit every day, 36 times more effective. And if we do a so-called bad habit, an ineffective habit every day, it'll take us back to zero. How many of you are excited about doing a tiny good habit every single day? Say amen. amen. All right. Got our Pentecostal audience in here this morning. So I'm excited about this series. Today we're looking at that first law. Again, make it obvious. And we have a little sheet that we handed out to you. Uh, those of you in the space, you have a sheet to fill out. And those of you online, click on the link in your chat. We're put. So could we hand those out now, please? Um, I forgot to say that. On this retreat, we went to this place uh, called Trinity Center. It's an Episcopal um, retreat center up in uh, West Cornwall, C Connecticut. And um, there's, a, there's a, a minister on site there, um, Minister Mark, and, and he told this story of this time where there's a story of a, a woman who was an airline ticket agent. And one day, the planes were backed up and they weren't able to get them all out and there was a long line. Everyone was coming to the front of the gate and saying, hey, you know, what do I do? Where's my plane? And there's a long line of people and she's dealing with them one by one. And all of a sudden this man walks up and he's like, I need to get on my plane. I need to get where I'm going. And she says, I'm sorry, sir, you're going to have to wait. You know, everybody is in this predicament. We have a problem with the planes that... They're not on schedule right now. And he said, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I need to be on a plane to where I need to get to right away. And the woman, without missing a beat, picked up the phone and said, security, we have a man here who doesn't know who he is. <laughs> Can you come help him? And I think that was a great little story for sometimes we forget who we are, or sometimes we put a little more emphasis, too much emphasis, on who we think we are. When stand in the line, because security isn't going to be able to tell you who you are. They're just going to give you a record. <laughs> and you don't need that. Kelly can attest to that. <laughs> sorry. It was too easy. I saw you start saying right there. Okay, so pencils and handouts everybody has? Okay, awesome. Posting the link in the chat, and it'll take you to a page there. And there, there's a form you can, you can either download the form, or you can fill out the form online. But remember to hit submit at the bottom. Hit submit at the bottom and it'll get sent to you, all right? And there's instructions there. So click on the link. After you fill it out, you want to hit submit. You, you don't want to submit it before you fill it out, right? So there you go. There's instructions on there too. So I'd like you guys to take a moment now and write down three good habits that you would like to establish in your life. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, we're going to force you to just write something down. All right? We're going to check your sheet as you go out today. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But let's go ahead now and take a moment 
and write down three good habits you would like to establish and I would encourage you to make them as specific as you can instead of I want to exercise more maybe you can think of I want to walk or I want to go to the gym or I want to run or whatever jump rope uh, you know I want to what is it specifically what is a good habit you want to do I want to floss every day be specific <coughs> by the way as you may know I, I can be silly so I don't really need floss right we're all flossing if we got teeth we're flossing if not they're getting clean too I bet good to write it down. Get it out of the metaphysical, right? The metaphysical, the realm of ideas. Let's get esoteric now. In the mind of God, there are all these ideas that are waiting to flow forth through you in your life. And those ideas want to become manifest form, right? So let's get them out of our heads, out of the ethers, and into the pencil or pen onto a piece of paper because now it starts to become more real more manifest now somebody might have a fear of writing it down because uh oh that's like a commitment right if I write it down I, I might have to do it well I don't want to waste my breath up here so I hope you will write it down and want to do it Right? We don't want to waste your time either. This is practical spirituality. Bringing forth the good in our life. So who would like to share one of their good habits? Anybody? Those of you online, if you want to post a good habit on the chat, please do. Uh, okay. Oops. So yeah, does anybody want to share what, something that they wrote down? No, sorry. Yeah, right. Wired up, goodness gracious. I want to establish the habit of conscious breathing every day for like 10 minutes, first thing in the morning. Good, good. That's nice and specific. There's a what and there's a how much. Anybody else care to share? John? Yeah, both of you. Come on. Greet my wife with a hug and a cup of coffee every morning. Ooh. Brownie points, John Chartier. My goodness. Specific when and for who? That's, you want to follow that up? <laughs> Guys, he already does that. Okay. I need to do my assigned PT exercises daily. That's really good. That's really good because some of us that have had health diagnoses and prognoses, we've been given some advice or probably lots of advice and embodying taking some of that in and putting it into a daily practice is going to be like what Justin, Reverend Justin said. It's going to enhance, it's going to improve our quality of life a year from now, tomorrow and a year from now. Anybody else? Corey, oh, okay, Corey first. Ladies first. Um, I'm, I'm working on learning more skills at work, so just trying to make time at least once a week for professional development. Nice. Any kind of specificness, like an online course or yeah. reading or? Right now I'm working on SQL. Um, we're online courses. Oh, so okay. Right, but our personal development is important and sometimes just as important as those mundane other things that we think we have to do every day. So that's good, that's real specific. 
Corey's was way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Staying out of jail is a, is a, is a good is, goal, man. It's a good practice. I'm, I'm working on it really hard, though. <laughs> uh, meditation. I want to take more time for, for, for morning meditation and, and even evening meditation. You know, like, I believe that when you, when you, that last five minutes before you go to sleep is super important for your mindset. It really is. Because Do you're you, going in there and you're going to marinate on that. Can, can you make like a length of time? Can you commit to a length of time for your meditations? Yeah, but I always fall asleep, so. <laughs> mm. Well, and there's a problem in your meditation practice. No, I'm serious. Um, Reverend Jay talks about that. It's like that's part of the posture of sitting upright and, and breathing and activating those chakras, those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chakras, and bringing that energy up in your spine. And, and by sitting upright, instead of curled on a ball on your pillow, it's harder to fall asleep. Honestly, I mean, he, 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 he gives a whole talk about that, but I would encourage you to maybe try to get that, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, Put a, give yourself a goal, give yourself a time, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Falling asleep in gratitude is is a warm and fuzzy feeling. There's that, but it's not the same as meditation. So. No. I'd like to work more on deepening my ability to be hyper aware of stillness. So how 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 what's a, what's a way what's a what's a what's a detailed like step that you can do because that's a little general. And be very aware of both the outer world and the inner world at yeah. the same time, right. which will deepen stillness. Yeah, right. Yeah, so sitting, sitting still in nature for five minutes a day or ten minutes so a day. Just observing and not thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. No, that's beautiful. Yeah. Does everybody kind of get the idea? Like, you know, and then, and then when we say it, when we vocalize it, there's, there's vibration in our body too, right? That, that, that sound of our own voice saying that I'm going to commit to my sequel training. It's like, wow, I said that out loud in front of 35 people. I mean, there's power in that. I mean, not to scare it, but there's, there's real power in that. So one more, anybody else? Do we have anybody online, Laura, that wants to share? There is no one online that wants to share. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next. There's going to be another opportunity to share. Oh, and I didn't skip ahead. There were good questions that came from his audience, but our questions were better. <laughs> our answers were better, sorry. Turn that off. Magic. Who wants, who wants the time travel? Time travel, time travel, time travel. What did I say, 717? A prison thing? No. A prison thing. Time travel. Is that a prison? Oh, wow, that's deep. Is time traveling a prison thing? <laughs> Anyone want to tackle that one? Where you, 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 you said you do talks. So you, you want to tackle that one? Is time travel a prison thing? Damn, dude, I'm going to go home and think about that over there. <laughs> A little help from Tommy Chong. Excellent. <laughs> well, patience with my daughter. There you go. Good. Good. All right. You got this. You got it started now. And. Today we're going to talk about the best way to start a good habit. How many of y'all excited about the best way of starting a good habit? Yes. yes. All right. Good habits are important. First of all, recognize you're not your habits. Right? You're not your habits. You in there. How many of you are in there? You in there are not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, you're not your body, you're not your habits, you're not your behaviors. 
You have a brain, you have thoughts, you have emotions, you have a body, you have habits. You in there is far more transcendent than anything, any other thing that you can mention. The Bible says, greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. You in there are greater than anything in the world. You as a spiritual being are greater than anything in the world. You are bigger than the habits. Make sense? You're not your habits. You're the image of God. Now, in 2001, researchers took a group of about 248 people, and they wanted to help these people establish good habits over the next two weeks. So what they did was the first group they had them just note when they exercised over the next two weeks. The second group, the group they called the motivation group, they gave them some motivational li literature about why it's good to exercise, and they gave them a little talk about how exercise is good to, you know, helps prevent heart disease and it's good for your heart. Gave them a motivational talk. That's what they did. The third group, they asked them to write down what their behavior is, the day they're going to do it, the time, and the location. You got it? That's on your sheet. We're going to get to that in a minute, so you don't have to remember that. But the bottom line is, last week we talked about cues. Cues triggers for behavior. Time and location are two big triggers. What happened? The first group that noted, the first group and the second group, they all, about 30, 35% of them, exercised at least once a week. It turns out the motivational group, it didn't really make much difference. The little talk, the literature, didn't make much difference. Group number three that wrote down the time, the location, 91% exercised at least once a week. That's a big difference. That's, a, that's over double the difference. Hundreds of studies have shown that when you have a, what's called an implementation intention, that's what that is, a fancy word for intending to implement something. When you intend to implement something. So that's what that statement does. It gets you to be very clear what you're going to do, what time you're going to do it, what day you're going to do it, and where you're going to do it. And when you do that, the chances of you actually doing it go way up. Why? Because a lot of time it's not motivation that we need, it's clarity. It's clarity. It's clarity of, okay, what, what day, what time? Where am I going to do this activity? Those little things can prevent us from moving forward. So what I'd like you to do now is look at your list of three good habits and circle one that you want to move forward with. You could say the most important one to you right now. Circle the one that you want, and I believe online you just fill in the blank of which one is your most important one. And now take that good habit. Does everybody, did everyone write it down? Okay. Now take that one, and you're going to fill out the second part on your sheet or in online. I will put in your behavior. So those of you who said, you know, be more patient, what, what does that look like? What is the behavior that that would look like? I'm not asking you to tell me, but you, you want to sort of think about what is that I want to be you know, listen better, or I don't know how you're going to put that in there. Um, I want to be patient, or maybe just saying patient is enough. I will blank at what time are you going to do this? What time are you going to do the exercises for your knee? What time are you going to do back stretches? What time are you going to meditate? And where? Where are you going to do your knee exercises. I'm going to do them in, in my living room. 
Um, I'm going to meditate in my the corner of my bedroom. I don't. Where Where are you going to do your your behavior? Very powerful exercise now. You're getting clear. You're getting clear. We're taking it out of the metaphysical realm of ideas and we're putting it down on paper with clarity. You know, we talk about, you hear about the law of attraction, right? You attract what you think about. Well, the more clear you get about what it is that you want to attract, the more concrete it becomes, the more likely you're going to bring it forth. Anybody want to share uh, their implementation intention sentence? Anyone want to share their implementation sentence? Testing. Yep, good. Nice and specific. I uh, wrote down, I'll play music at 6 o'clock p.m. in my band practice room. Sweet. Nice. 91%. Did everyone catch that statistic? 91% of the people that wrote it down with a where and when achieved that result that they desired. Anybody else want to share what they wrote down? Their where and when. True. I'm the caregiver for my mom, so it, did I mess it up? Oh, consistently being kind and patient. So I will smile, listen, not sigh, speak gently. <laughs> um, at every conversation, in home, car, restaurants, or visiting family. <laughs> that's great. That's broad, but that is. I mean, I mean that's restaurants and cars. I mean. When you're driving, you can roll your eyes a little bit, right? You're looking forward, and the person next to you saying, "Jesus, did she just say that?" What are you rolling your eyes about? Oh, that bird just. You know. It is. So the sign is really, that's the yes. big commitment yeah. there. No yes. sign. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Anybody else want to share where and when? Come on, one more, one more. All right. Okay, so I'm doing better at my exercise, dance, and hiking, but I'm not really good with the stretching part, and my heels are hurting me. So I will stretch at 7 o'clock in the living room every night. Beautiful. Yeah, because you have an end goal there, so your heels don't hurt. That's great. That's great. Do people get that? That that specific. That specific. Oh Jesus. That's choosing a specific time. <laughs> really, really makes a difference. Um, we have a volunteer walking straight. Um, Anybody have one more before I jump ahead? We're going to do a really cool thing next. Okay. The people Are people getting this? Are people liking this? I mean, yes. practical Christianity, right? I mean, this is practical, you know, it's a pen to paper. Good stuff. Sorry? Is that a sigh? <laughs> All right, a little time travel again. Very good. Hey, you guys took a major step writing those habits down with clarity, intention, specificity. Let's give ourselves a big hand. All right, or a pat on the back, whatever. Right? Good for you. Excellent. Uh, now you're that much closer to moving forward because you got clear, clear.
And uh, you sort of, you know, uh, that clarity is power. All right, now let's uh, let's talk briefly about uh, another implementation intention that you can utilize. All right, it's called habit stacking. Habit stacking. I mean, I'm reminded of the scripture from 1 Corinthians 14:40. Let all things be done decently and in order. So, habit stacking has to do with taking a good habit and sticking it in with other habits that you're already doing. Let me give you an example. After I... I'm making this off topic. After I pour a cup of tea in the morning, I will meditate for one minute in the kitchen. You just stacked, you just put a habit in with some other habit you already have. After I pour a cup of tea, I'm going to meditate for one minute in the kitchen. You see that? The author of the Atomic Habits uh, said when I take a break for lunch, as soon as I close the laptop and take a break for lunch, I'm going to do 10 push-ups. Very specific. What habit could you, first of all, where could you stack a good habit in your life? I like to just note during the day when I'm living my day and thinking about good habits, Mike, that's a good place to put a habit, you know. Um, that's a good place to put it. There's a flow that's already happening for me. Like when I get up in the morning, I do, uh, I have little habits, right? We all have habits. They're cues. One cue leads to another. Let me just tell you a brief story that he tells. Dennis Diderot, hundreds of years ago, his daughter was getting married. He didn't have enough money to pay for the wedding. The Empress of Russia, Catherine the Great, heard about his plight, and she was a big reader. And he had helped write the encyclopedia, an encyclopedia, which she enjoyed reading. So in her compassion for him, she offered to buy his entire library, which was the equivalent of $150,000 today. And not only that, she paid him an annual salary to manage her library. Wasn't that kind? So now, not only could he pay for his daughter's wedding, he had wealth. He had wealth. He acquired a scarlet robe now, he said, everything I had was not was out of place compared to my scarlet robe. My other clothes didn't look right. You know, the, the calves didn't look right. This didn't look, didn't look right. It looked out of unity. It looked out of sync. So what happened? He started to buy expensive statues to put them in his house. He bought a new chair, he got rid of that straw chair, and bought a leather chair, and he started to buy stuff in his house. Guess what? That became known as the Diderot effect. One thing that leads to another. We do it all the time. You buy a dress, what happens? Sometimes then you want to get matching earrings. You want shoes to go with the dress, right? One thing leads to another. It cues. It cues another. We're talking about cues. Make it obvious, right? One thing cues another one. That's what we're trying to do with looking at habits. I mean, that's, that's a well-known thing. So how many of you have bought something online before, right? You buy something online and some shrewd, salespeople, you'll get a pop-up. 
of an item that's related to the item you just bought, right? If you've got this, well, then you're going to want this, this attachment, right? I, I did that not long ago. I bought a golf gadget, and then next thing you know, they're like, well, you'll want the, you know, how to apply this to this part of your game. I'm like, yeah, you're right, I will want that part of my game. <laughs> now, instead of $69, I'm spending another 50 cent, whatever it was, right? It's the Diderot effect, one thing leading to another. So we can do that with our habits, utilize that power with our habits. One thing leads to another. Here's, here's how I've applied it uh, recently. With I apply it in many areas, but one is uh, I, in the morning, I will uh, go to the kitchen, drink some lemon water, take the dishes out, you know, make the lemon water, etc. Then I'll do some, you know, after going to the bathroom and, and all that stuff, washing the face and all that. I'll do some yoga postures or some exercises of some kind. And then I've had some physical therapy exercises that I wanted to start doing regularly. Guess what? That's a perfect place to plug it in. Because I'm already in the flow of doing yoga or energization or other kind of stretches. So it's a natural place to go, okay, let me do some of that physical therapy right now. One thing leads to another. And guess what happens? The Diderot effect. Eventually, when that becomes a habit, eventually, hopefully, you start to automatically feel the craving. One thing cues you to the next, right? When I'm done doing the yoga postures or whatever, now automatically I get a cue, okay, time to do some of the physical therapy exercise. A cue. During my meditation time in the morning, I, I started memorizing for the last couple of months uh, Yogananda's poem called Samadhi. An amazing, an amazing poem. He wrote it to help people understand what is it, what does oneness feel like? What does it look like? And automatically I get a cue when I sit down to meditate after I do a little reading or whatever and do some other stuff. Um, I, I automatically reach for that poem and we'll read a couple lines and begin to memorize it. You know, where can you stack some of your good habits that you want to develop? Make sense? So what I'd like you to do right now is write down, you did this last week. If you don't want to do it again, that's fine. If you can think of, you can write down, brainstorm some habits you do every day without fail. What are some things you do every day without fail? I brush my teeth, I wash my face, I, you know, take a shower, whatever it is. And then the next part is, after I do this habit, then I'm going to do this habit. See what I mean? Stacking. Stacking. After I meditate, then I'm going to go to the treadmill for 20 minutes. I'm just making that up, right? It's stacking. After I go to the treadmill, then I'm going to read for 30 minutes. So go ahead and write down some habits you do every day without fail. So now under habit stacking, you see the sentence, after I, which is a current habit, after I brush my teeth, after I unload the dishwasher, after I whatever, take the dog for a walk, I will, what's the habit you want to establish? 
for marriage or a partnership. After I get in bed at night, I will give my spouse, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my partner a kiss. You just stacked a kiss as part of a habit that you have every night. Right? After I take off my work shoes, I will put on my gym clothes and go work out. You can pay attention to your daily activities and think about the good habits and think about where could this fit well. And you can stack a whole bunch of them. It can, one thing can cue the next. You know, after I eat breakfast, then I read for 30 minutes. After I read for 30 minutes, then I make a to-do list. And after I make the to-do list, then I do the first item on my to-do list. See, you can just stack a bunch of things together so that each one cues the next. And you don't have to think about it. It's a plan you've made in advance. This is a plan you've made in advance, an implementation intention, something you intend to implement in advance. You don't have to say, well, do I feel like writing today? When am I going to write? When should I exercise? Because you've already decided. After this happens, this happens. After this, then this happens. There's a, now, we've talked about two different things today, right? We did the, the statement, an implementation intention, which is the best way to begin a new habit. We said, I will blank at blank in a certain location. That's one thing. Another way of using that implementation is to stack a good habit with other things. You see? They're not the same thing. They're, they're different uses of the same principle. Make sense? Very powerful to get greater results in your life stacking. And I don't know about you, but I, after a while, I just enjoy it. I'm like, oh, that'll be great to put it here. And then it just starts to become a natural thing. After you do such and such, you'll start to feel, okay, it's time to meditate. It's time to work on my finances. It's time to whatever. Because you have started to set up cues to get you to take the next action. So, anybody want to share uh, a place you're going to stack something? Okay, we're almost done. I'll share one that uh, just to get us started on this. I, I love this idea of stacking. It really, really works. Um, on this one? No. Uh, so, I do this thing in the morning, every morning, these asanas that actually I learned from Reverend Jay a couple years ago, and some of you have done them with me. The, um, I am young, I am strong, I am healthy, my body knows it, my body shows it. I've shared that with a number of you and it's, it's really powerful. I do that every morning and there's some other things that go along with it. Um, and now I just decided I'm going to stack, after I do that every morning, either loading or unloading the, dish, the dishes in the dishwasher because that always seems to be a thing because sometimes after we eat at night we don't put the dishes in the dishwasher <laughs> sometimes sometimes so so you know that's a that's a nice little habit stacker the other one that i think is is real good i do a, a to-do list every morning before i get out of bed when i get out of bed i think about i plan my day i visualize the steps of the day i make a to-do list i'm going to do the first thing on that to-do list first thing you know, that kind of that kind of stacking. I think it's it's really powerful. So, does anybody want to share an I, any ideas they have for habit stacking? Yeah. Oops. I forgot to turn on the Christ candle. Okay. After I pee and get coffee, <laughs> <laughs> I will read my daily reflection. 
first of course first thing in the morning i will meditate for five minutes after i meditate i will intentionally pray after i pray with intention i will plan and make a list of things to do for the day yeah that's that's fantastic and that and it sounds easier right i mean it's it's a lot but you're stacking in on something you already are doing you're like what reverend jay is saying you're inserting it it's not that much more you know but that's going to really it sounds to me that's really going to increase the efficiency of your day <laughs> by doing that hopefully so yeah. anybody else come on stack some habits for me anybody Corey all right so mine is before um already um dial into a, a meeting and like listen to that while I walk every morning so um, before that I'm going to read because normally I would just sit there and watch TV on my phone and that's just annoying <laughs> <laughs> it can be frustrating right yeah, yeah right why something that's spiritually development you know, yeah right right and then you're starting your day not frustrated you're starting your day inspired yeah that's beautiful that's going to have a positive effect anybody else Okay, really? All right. You guys are liking this though, right? I mean, you're getting some value out of it? Good. All right, we're almost done. Um, See, you want to make sure that uh, if you want to do this thing every day, then you're doing the other thing every day, right? If you're walking every day, then, then you want to put it there because you'll know you're going to do it. It's not going to help if, if you're not doing the walking, you know. All right? Is this good or is this good? How many of you excited about moving forward with this? Yeah. All right, let's stand up. Let's stand up, and let's stand up at home now. I see you sitting, come on. <laughs> All right, so I want you to think of that good habit. We're talking about one habit, one tiny habit. One tiny habit that you do regularly over time, five years, 10 years, whatever it is, is gonna make a big difference for you. A big difference. That's what we're talking about. Little things making a big difference over time. So I want you to just stand with, with a sense of certainty and confidence. I want you to see yourself in your mind. See that new good habit you are in the process of developing. See yourself on that day, at that time, doing what it is that you wrote down in that location. Tomorrow's a good time to begin, ladies and gentlemen. The beginning of the week. Beginning of the week. See yourself, if it fits for you tomorrow to do it tomorrow, see yourself tomorrow taking that step and doing it. And feel what it's going to feel like after you do it. The satisfaction. I just did it. I just did it. Good for me. Good for me. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for your presence and activity in our lives. Thank you for these tools helping us to utilize our greater potential, helping us to become the people that we would like to become. We know that with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. 
And we thank you, Father, Mother, God, for guiding us in this process, for giving us the clarity, the focus, the strength, whatever we need to move forward with good habits. Because we know good habits are key, a key to health of mind, to health of body, to health of spirit. And so it is. Amen. A week ago, Saturday, I went to the gym, and just to, just before I was about to go in the door, a teenager. Okay. So we have some take-home stuff today, right? Literally in our in our hands. So. Awesome. Did everyone enjoy that? It was, I know it's a little, it was a little different, but I, good, good. I thought it was fun. Um, okay, Kelly, you want to come up and do the love offering? Now? service where we give you the opportunity to give back. Congratulations. <laughs> you know what though? Honestly, giving is such, it is an opportunity and it's such a powerful thing in our lives. You know, it's the, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> See, he's already given me. Gifts are such a powerful thing in our lives because of the law of karma or the law of reciprocity, or whatever you want to call it. It's the law of giving and getting back. But the really cool thing about it is <coughs> when, you, when you give, and you give with a happy heart, then it comes back to you multiplied. Who, how many gardeners do we have in here? Anybody garden? Anybody? Okay. Who's ever planted seed? Okay. <laughs> and got like tons of vegetables from just tiny little seeds. That's exactly the way it works. So say it with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love and I receive in abundance. Father God, we are so grateful for these offerings, for these gifts. We thank you for this abundance. We thank you for the abundance that's coming back to each and every giver. We thank you for each and every person here. And so it is. Okay, now I believe we're on to announcements. Yep. Sorry? Alrighty, got a, several announcements here. Okay, so next Sunday following fellowship, we are getting together a Power of Eight group that will led, be led by Judy Hill and Lynn Chartier. We plan to meet on the second Sunday of each month to hold a positive vision for the future of our country. It's not time to buy into fear,
but to keep our vibrations as high as possible in affirming that we are always anchored in the steadfast goodness of God. So how many people are here familiar with the Power of Eight Groups, Lynn McTaggart's Power of Eight Groups? Okay, several. Um, I'll just give you a quick, uh, she and her husband live in England and they've done all these studies and they've found that when eight people get together in a focused circle with a focused intention, and mostly it's done for people within that Power of Eight, <clears throat> but that Power of Eight group can really, do a, a manifest amazing things. And I've gone through her class and her master class in 2022, and some of you heard me speak about all the, I mean, as we were getting ready to move here from Las Vegas to um, here in Chattanooga, I mean, finding a mover, finding my new um, forerunner, finding a buyer for my old Camry, and we were crunched against time, and then we thought we were gonna have to rent an apartment here and then, and so we signed a lease. All right, you're right. Anyway, Power of Eight's really powerful. And so when and you sit in that, yeah, no, she's right, she's right, move along. Um, so I invite, even if you're not familiar with Power of Eight, um, to come and join in. And, and, and it's useful for healing, it's useful for manifestating, manifestations. More or less than eight. And it can be more or less than eight people. That's right. That's right. Okay. So on Thursdays, every Thursday, our Wellness Warriors, facilitated by yours truly, um, meets here at the church at 12 noon. Um, if you're tired of being sick and would like someone to talk to besides your doctors, uh, you know, come check us out on Thursdays. I, I encourage you. Um, and then also on Thursday evening, this coming Thursday evening, Amanda Adamson, will lead our uh, metaphysical discussion group at 6.30. So on the back table, huh? What? Well, belly dancing is the following week. Yeah, this coming week is, is metaphysical discussion. And then the Thursday after, metaphysical discussion meets every other week, Thursday, and belly dancing is every other, so they alternate. Um, on the back table, we have registration forms for this year's Unity Fall Retreat, um, the UMAS Festival at uh, Retreat at Lake June, Alaska in North Carolina. This year, Reverend Jim Blank, the, C the CEO of Unity Worldwide Headquarters, is going to be the keynote speaker. Um, the deadline to sign up is August 12th, so it's coming up. Please see Penny if you're interested or um, talk to Gary and Dawn were there last year. I was there last year. Um, yeah, you, Lynn and John were there last year, so it's a, it's an, it's a, and we have um, a musical guest this year. That's how we, that's how we met Christy Snow last year. This year, it's a guy, um, Eddie Watkins Jr., I believe, out of St. Louis, who sings a lot for Unity Center New York. He's fabulous. Um, next Sunday, August nineteenth, uh, from six to eight in the evening, we're going to have a special event here, our very first drum circle here at McBrien. Woohoo! Some of you were with us and we did the drum circles down at the Hubert Fry Center. We're going to have one here. So that's, the, it says here the 19th. It's the 10th. Oh, oh. I don't know, that's what's in the deal. Yeah, okay. And well, I think that's what Amanda said. I think, the tenth. yeah, you're right, it is the 10th. It is the 10th. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, it's the 10th. Oh. It's next Saturday. It's next Saturday. So sorry. <laughs> Don't listen to any of it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. So yeah, so it's next Saturday from 6 to 8 in the evening. Drum circle here. Um, we're going to start with a meet and greet potluck. Um, people in our community at large have been invited too. Um, and Laura Noyes is going to be... Uh, opening the circle with a time with her moving with spirit that we used to do out at the Red Bank Center and then Heath Lullen, Llewellyn, thank you, is going to be leading the drumming circle. So we do ask you to bring your own drums and instruments, you know, frogs and flutes or whatever. But he does have oh, and he does have extra. Awesome. Awesome. So that's going to be a lot of fun next Saturday night, six to eight. All right, so even though it feels like we're still in the middle of summer, we have some exciting new ideas for September. 
The first is a Sunday morning meditation service that would take place like 8.30 to 9.30. And so these would be guided meditation sessions um, that are for deliberate focusing of attention uh, uh, inward and to heighten our spiritual awareness um, and our spiritual energy. So just a quick show of hands. I mean, how many people would be interested in like an 8.30 a.m. guided meditation service? Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, so it's on September 1st. <laughs> right? Mona, yeah. Um, so, uh, all right, we also have a new fall spirit group series that's going to be facilitated by Nicole Wellington. Um, it's going to be a Zoom class on Sunday afternoons at 4 p.m. starting on September 8th. It is called The Path of Conscious Creation. It's yeah, well, yeah, kickoff, sign up start next week. So, um, but, and the class will start on the 8th. Um, I think there's a, there's a, there's a, a slide for this on the next one. Yeah. Um, so it's a series based on videos that were created by Reverend Michael Gott, who is the senior minister of Unity at uh, Houston. And there are information sheets. Well, this is the information sheet. It's on the back. Um, and signups will start next week. And we had an, an announcement or request from Sarah Lord. Yes, it's interesting how we get to uh, face our fears and discomforts. Uh, my landlord has decided to sell the building I am renting. Um, along, along with that goes the rent that I can afford. <laughs> um, so I'm very concerned about finding a place to live. Um, and I have a dog who comes to about here, um, which adds to the challenge. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, if anybody uh, hears of anything that might be suitable for me and my pup, I would appreciate knowing. And um, also for me to share bigger, my trust issues are being punched, <laughs> along with um, my difficulty asking for help. So I thank you all for being here and allowing me to face my challenges. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, and last but not least, next week we're going to be welcoming back our a guest speaker, Annie Sims, that many of you remember spoke for us in, in April. Um, she's does a, uh, she does various talks, several of them based on Neil Donald Walsh's book series called Conversations with God. Um, she will talk next week about the illusion of disunity, a topic of importance when polarization is perhaps at its highest level it's ever been in today's world, right? Um, and I should turn that off. Here we go. So, okay, so let's close our service, stand up, and join me in singing the peace song.
the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us, wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Woohoo! Very nervous. <laughs> <laughs>